Built in 1858 and extended in 1963, Titsworth Reservoir is the second largest reservoir in Staffordshire and is located between the town of Leek and the Roaches, which is a prominent ridge atop one of the peaks in the district. On the map it kind of looks like an upside down meerkat, but I'm sure the nearby village name of Meerbrook is merely coincidence. Yeah! Sorry. I'm sorry, alright? Sorry. As is always the case with these winter afternoon rides, I was racing against the light, and while the roads were dry, it was cold and grey. Definitely a day for the heated gloves. first shot was, predictably, from a lay-by with a view, en route to the reservoir. Nothing to write home about really, there's no clear subject and there's a ton of boring white space. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with white space, but it has to serve a purpose, whether that's drawing the eye to the subject, isolating a subject to make them appear smaller or alone, but here it's just empty sky with barely any cloud definition. Here's an example of one of my photos that contains a shitload of white space and it's one of my all-time favourite photos that I've taken. Back to shot one, 
The bracken in the foreground does nothing to help frame the image as there's nothing coming in from either side or from the top. And the field full of molehills is effectively just more boring white space, only green and full of distracting molehills. So that's how not to take a landscape photo. Let's crack onto the reservoir and take something a bit better. As my friend was running late, as of course is tradition, I decided to get a new shot of the bike with a nice background. I put the camera at the right height so that the petrol tank breaks the line of the fence and the reservoir in the background, which helps make the bike stand out a bit, as if being the only red object in shot didn't already do that. But it doesn't obscure the view of the reservoir and is nowhere near breaking the horizon. It's a shame the bike's dirty from the ride, but it's still looking good. I've lightened the shadows a bit so you can see some more detail and I've applied a tiny bit of dehaze just to make the dark green of the tree stand out a bit more in the background. I was so focused on making sure the bike covered the post on the left, I completely missed the one at the back. But I can always edit them out in post. Oh, sorry, that's twice. Sorry. I'm sorry. Really, I am. Um, I just can't always help it. Anyway, after straightening up my bike, I went closer to the water for my third shot of the day. And here you can see a much better use of white space. The tree creeping in from the right just about stops the boring sky from detracting from the image. And there are just enough subtle changes in the shade on the sky. I much prefer some proper colour, but I live in northwest England. It's usually either this or a granite sky that's about to soak me. The bank on the other side of the tree line with the people walking looks okay, but again there's still no clear subject so the eye kind of wanders all over the shot looking for one. Cropped in like this looks much better. The railing has gone, now the people are clearly the subject. But had I spotted this at the time I would have moved my camera to the right in order to frame the people by using the overhanging branches. And I would have opened my aperture nice and wide to blur the foreground branches. Noted for my next visit though. My fourth shot was a nice vista just a little way down from the car park. A lone bench facing the reservoir, angled towards where two tree lines overlap as the reservoir turns the corner behind the one on the left. In this case, the white space of the sky is acceptable, as is the haze. I want the background to look washed out a bit, with just the bench and the grass in the foreground looking vivid, in order to give it a bit of a dreamy effect. Like a morning mist. It would have been great if the groundskeeper had a strimmer for the edges in the foreground, but what are you going to do? I was going to try and focus stack this shot, but looking through the raw files it seems something went wrong and it looks like I might have actually had the camera on autofocus. Idiot. In case you don't know, focus stacking is where you take three shots, can be more if you want, with the focus set to different parts of the image each time. 
So here, I thought I'd taken one shot with the bench in focus, one with the water in focus, and one with the background tree lines in focus. The three images are then stitched together in Photoshop, or similar program, discarding the outer focus bits, leaving you with a landscape photo where the background, foreground, and middle ground are all in focus. In reality, I just took three shots with the foreground in focus, and even then it wasn't great. Again, I prefer it when it's cropped in. You can see these two rabbits here, you can see the robin, and you've got the birds flying low over the water. But, cropped in, I don't like the haze as much. So if I'd have wanted to take it cropped in like this, I'd have zoomed in, and then I wouldn't have wanted the haze, so I would have amended my camera settings. My final shot of the day was of this couple walking their dogs along this path. I've got a nice tree line and cottage, and then the roaches higher up in the background, complete with a foggy peak to break up some of this white space. And I've got some darker shadows here to add a bit of a moody atmosphere to the image. But with no sunset to witness due to all the thick cloud and foggy higher ground, it was off to the lucky trout before heading home to edit the photos. If you're still watching this far in, thank you so much for your support. Please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notification bell to stay informed of new videos. I hate saying all that, but every little bit helps towards getting the channel seen by the famous algorithm and get the video shown to more people so I can get off the ground. Until next time, cheers.